thinking since yesterday. Now, I'm contemplating my next words, my next move, my next candidate. <laughs> I'm definitely in a dilemma of choice. What have they done to me? This Miss Universe organization has really turned my world of forecasting upside down. How on earth I would be able to reduce my top 15 to top 12? What if I just make a smaller kind of this stuff, put all the names of candidates and the first 12 which Trump will be on my list? What do you think? It's uh, really difficult to choose. There are lots of gorgeous candidates this year. Why do they have to make a 12? 15 is just fine. And why would you deprive three more girls of having a shot at the Miss Universe crown? I don't understand. I just can't get it. I made a list today. Who to delete? How to trim it down to 12 is another story. I've been thinking about it uh, since uh, two days ago, and I really don't have any idea how I can remove eight gorgeous women off my list. I'm really very sorry for those countries that I won't include in my list. God knows how much I love 20 or 25 girls out of those 80-something, and uh, we can do anything about it. We just have to settle for 12. There's one candidate that I really didn't have difficulty including her in my top list, and that is uh, Venezuela. She was, she's simply a stunner, and she really competes. She's really very determined, and that determination shows in her every move. Philippines is undoubtedly going to be included in the top 12. Well, it doesn't always happen that the host country is included in the Magic 15 or Magic 12. For example, Russia two years ago. Miss Universe was held in the country, but uh, Miss Russia didn't make it. But I think Philippines is definitely going through. She's gorgeous. She's uh, simply charming. She's not over the top. Just, you know, just a little more punches. <laughs> The English there is fine. The problem now is the information. It was not true. It was false. Venezuela 
got the most elusive back-to-back, -back, not in their own country. Maybe Maxine was not really thinking about that. Maybe it's her English again. Maybe what's in her mind is different from what comes out of her mouth. I don't understand a lot of Filipinos. They would bash those people who would want her to speak in her in any language that she's comfortable with, particularly Taglish. It is very clear that she is more comfortable in Taglish, and why don't let her use it to explain her views? You know, I don't see anything wrong with speaking in Filipino mixed with English. The topic of whether or not to get an interpreter from Maxime Medina has gained a lot of interest from viewers. It has pushed my five-month-old video from 55,000 views to 150,000 views in just five days. She has to get used to it. She needs to get used to an interpreter. The moment she wins, she will represent the country to the whole universe. She will be our, she will not only a beauty queen, she will be an ambassadress of Philippine culture. And, and she would definitely go through with what uh, be a worse bet had gone through. You're going to be interviewed by a lot of media. You're going to be invited to attend press conferences and, and uh, speaking engagements, ambush interviews, CNN's fast talk. And she has to relay essential information, not only about herself, but about anything. And I'm afraid she can't do that. Or it's not because I don't like her. I love Maxine, but it's just to listen to me, the fact that she just can't do it. Speaking in the Philippines on the Miss Universe stage, we not only give us pride, you know, it is, it is greater than any crown she could have. It is greater than the Miss Universe crown, because you're gonna let the whole universe listen to your beautiful language. It will be the very first time, and she will definitely be an, an icon in the Philippines. The moment she wins, every Filipino will be teary-eyed. I may cry. I may cry. I think this is right time. It's not about Maxine, even if Maxine speaks English fluently. I would still suggest that our candidate speaks Filipino. There's no other time. Again, I am reiterating this. Even if Maxine speaks English fluently, the need to speak in Filipino is now. Cheryl Leone, I think, well, not all first-timers make it through, but I think Sierra Leone is different because she really is gorgeous. She stands out, you know, in some instances. And she comes off as strong and determined and very competitive. Her figure is just right for her frame, and uh, she speaks confidently. She has a very wonderful story to tell. There's never been a black winner for a few years now. I think she'll make it through. Another possibility is that a back-to-back -back win for India. <gasps> Not the back-to-back -back win that we have in our mind. It is uh, with reference to Miss India's winning the Miss Universe 1994, which was held in the Philippines. That was Sushmita Sen. And uh, India might do it again on the Miss Universe stage in the Philippines. It would be a back-to-back -back of sort. Mm -hmm. Japan. Japan doesn't have that you know, Miss Universe aura yet, but uh, she has been doing rounds of humanitarian works. I think she has been to war-torn areas, like in Syria, and uh, sharing her knowledge in health, particularly in first aid. She speaks quite a little English, and she is uh, very much in contrast with the rest of the candidates. She is, she is very simple, and, but she looks very elegant. Who knows? She might be a... Uh, once she gets through the Magic 12, she can go all the way. I believe that the judges are really swayed by what they say during the preliminary interview. The, the judges will be in awe of her experiences and will be carried away by her emotion-filled delivery of uh, anything. And majority, if not all, majority of judges are after the substance, after the substance in you as a total one, not just as a beauty queen, but as a woman. I like Argentina. I like Costa Rica. They're not, they're not really pageant uh, royalties, but uh, I think this time they will make a mark. There's also Nicaragua. Well, Indonesia has been making good uh, results lately in all beauty pageants, and I think it will continue. Miss Indonesia, Kijewaro, is a very Miss Universe sounding name. Kijewaro. Who knows? That might bring luck to her. My friend Chad at Suluera, 
he is a, he is not only a pageant aficionado, he is a pageant uh, director in Art Prophet. And uh, he has been telling this since time immemorial, I think two months ago, three months ago, I don't know, that uh, he feels we will have a new Miss Universe. She's uh, talking about uh, a new country that might grab the crown this time. And he might be correct in the end, because we see a lot of candidates from non-pageant powerhouse countries doing well. We have been seeing these names of Barbados, Guatemala, although I don't really like the way she struts the stage, and pardon about the word, glides the stage. Mm -hmm. Vietnam, and my early favorites, I must tell this to you, one of my early favorites is Singapore. She was not really, not she was not really one of my favorites, but uh, during the gown fashion show, the, the Tierno fashion show, she really mesmerized me, you know, the way she carries herself, the way she projects herself on stage. So I researched about her and she speaks English fluently and she speaks with substance. She acts like she's a celebrity. She, she has that uh, image of uh, a girl who is used to camera, who is used to dealing with a lot of people. She sounds very educated. And uh, I think there's been only two or three Miss Singapore delegates who have made it to the first cot. And who knows, Singapore might give a good fight this year. It's really very hard to choose because there are a lot of beautiful candidates this year. It would be too problematic a situation for me because at the end of the day, I might just select between Indonesia and Thailand. And I don't want it to happen. I don't want to squeeze my mind just to analyze who's better because I both want them to go through the edge of Miss Thailand is she's really very good in swimsuit. She's got the body, she's got the looks, she's got the charm, she's got that ideal for television commercial hair. And the thing had just died and that would be the greatest gift that anyone can give to the people of Thailand. A crown. Colombia has changed a bit. She was far different from what we used to see in television, on the internet. She has gained a lot of weight, I think. She looks darker. The image of the regal look that she showed on her videos was not there anymore. Pardon me. I think she will still make it. I think she's still a top contender to the crown. Venezuela remains on top of my list in general. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I have to finish my top 20 so that it would be a little bit easier for me to trim it down to 15, 15 first. And that trimming down from 15 to 12 will be the most heart melting moment of my pageant vlogging this year. Oh, it's cold, but the pageant continues to be as hot as ever. So remember on the 27th or lunch time of 28, I would be releasing my top 12, the most awaited top 12 with my friends. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for listening. It's like a radio program. <laughs> this is your friend Robato saying arigatou gozaimasu. And thanks for watching, always. <laughs>